Hi guys, I'm Johnny Chivers. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a data engineer with over 10 years experience working Monday to Friday, primarily in the financial services sector, five times AWS certified, and I like nothing more in my free time than making videos for this very YouTube channel. We're on the lesson three now of this DynamoDB 101 series. Last lesson, we looked at some basic operations of putting data, getting data, deleting data, updating data in the DynamoDB tables that we built in lesson one. In this lesson, we're gonna look at something more complicated, which is called a DynamoDB transaction. This is where we wanna carry out a series of operations like update and insert in one go in an all or nothing approach that if we don't insert or we don't update the data, then we don't carry out the second operation. This is particularly useful in the example I'm going to show where we're running an e-commerce store and we wanna check that the item is in stock and we can sell it before we create the order. There's not really much to it other than that and then you need to see the code in action to really understand it. So with that in mind, join me on the console and we'll get on with making that transaction happen. Hi guys, welcome back onto the console for lesson three, where we're gonna take a look at DynamoDB transactions. So as explained in the intro, a DynamoDB transaction is an all-in-one approach to actually making requests with DynamoDB. So back on the Cloud9, and if we have a look at the transaction.py file, I've done this um, code again to keep it simple for us. So again, all this is the configuration at the top that we covered in lesson one. We'll not go over the same things again. This time the Bodo3 library is a transaction write items. It takes in a transaction items command where it does two things. It's gonna update a table and it's gonna put it into a table. So let's look at this in a wee bit more detail before we run it. The table name is the product table, which is product. I'm looking at the product ID of one. What I wanna do is update. So if you remember back to the last lesson, we looked at update last and it's a bit more complex, but I'll read it out for you. Update expression, we wanna set the stock attribute equal to the stock attribute minus a decrease. And what that decrease variable is equal to in the expression attribute values is one. So what I'm saying is that when we run this code, I wanna run this command. I want stock to take the stock and minus one off it because I'm gonna purchase this. But only do this if the stock is greater than or equal to one. That was That's very complex, so let's just run over that again. I wanna set the stock equal to the current stock value minus one, which is coming from here, only if the stock is greater than one, i.e. the stock is not zero. So we must have the item in stock in order to minus it from one. And when we do the minus, or when this action passes, we wanna put it into the orders table and we wanna create an order using the stock item that we've minused off. And only if we have the stock and only if the order completes do we want this entire transaction to run. If we don't have enough stock and it fails, then we don't wanna do the order. Alternatively, if the order doesn't work out, like the credit card gets refused, we don't want the stock to come off. So that's what this transaction does. It's an all or one approach. We must have it in stock greater than one and we must be able to minus one off it. And we must be able to put it into the order table or else none of this happens and we roll back. So if I hit run, it's successfully ran there. You can see the status code 200. Jump onto the tables and let's firstly look at product and we should see a minus one off the iPad count of 15 that I updated in the last video. And if we look then at the order status, you can see that we have order ID two and product ID in. And then for completeness, just so we can see it, I'm gonna give this an order ID of one and I'm going to save that file and I'm gonna run. This time we should have one less on the iPad count in product. So we go to product and you can see it's down to 13. And we go to order and you can see that we have two orders now. So that's DynamoDB transactions in a nutshell. It's that kind of all in one approach. If it doesn't work, then we roll back. If it all works, it all goes in. So that's bringing forward today, guys. Not really much to this really. Um, just get that code and, and have a play around. As usual, I'll make all this information for free on my website, www.johnnychivers.co.uk. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching.